Hello, today we will discuss the risk factor for Pseudomonas and why is this important in pneumonia? It's because we have a different treatment plan for these patients as well as we have a different treatment for those who have MRSA risk factors as well as we have a different treatment plan for those who have both MRSA and Pseudomonas risk factors. But this has been dealt in another video. So today we will not discuss the treatment of these specific uh, patients. We will discuss especially the risk factor for Pseudomonas. So pseudomonas, we write it like this, pseudomonas. And I will take a sputum culture now from the patient and I will send it to the pathology lab. The pathology lab will now look at, look at this sample in a microscope and will tell me that this is a gram negative bacilli. Gram-negative gram negative is just a coloration system that they use. You can have gram-positive or gram-negative depending on which color you have. And this is the type of bacteria. So gram-negative bacilli. For example, MRSA have gram-positive cocci in clusters. That's MRSA. Gram-positive cocci in clusters. But in Pseudomonas we have gram-negative bacilli. And this is one one this is not a risk factor this is this is a statement from the pathology lab this is this is like uh, we we know now that this patient have probably probably a pseudomonas infection but risk factors are when we have comorbidities comorbidities co means just another disease Morbi morbidity is disease so another disease and we are especially concerned now with the lung we, ha we have many lung diseases that can uh, cause a risk that are risk factors for pseudomonas infection for example those patients who have copd chronic obstructive pulmonary disease or those who have aspiration into the lung or those who have cystic fibrosis or those who have bronchi ectasis so many many lung diseases are causing risk uh, or are risk factors for pseudomonas infection but we also have kidney diseases Kidney. This is a kidney. We also have liver diseases that can cause uh, pseudomonas. So not just not just lung disease. We also have diabetes. Diabetes. Or alcoholism. So here I will draw a bottle of wine. So alcoholism. What else? heart disease so the patient comes in now and if he have any of these and this is this is pretty much covering almost all, all the diseases because we have renal disease liver disease heart disease lung disease alcoholism diabetes and so on so this patient have comorbidities we have COPD lung disease aspiration cystic fibrosis and so on when we have any of these then we have risk factor for pseudomonas and that means that this pa these patients should be treated accordingly. So they should be treated against pseudomonas. There also exist those patients who have uh, been taking antibiotics. Antibiotics within last three months. Last three months. There are also those who have been recently in the hospital. I will just write. I will draw like this. A sign for hospital. Recent hospitalization. So, this is pretty much it. And as you see, uh, the risk factor for pseudomonas are very broad and it covers many, many patients. So, it means that most of the patients will be actually affected uh, in this in this category, which means that most of the patients should be then treat, uh, treated against 
pseudomonas. And we also, I also did another video about MRSA risk factors and then you take that video and you look at it and you see the risk factors for MRSA and if we have both MRSA and pseudomonas then you need to treat both accordingly. And I have made another video which discuss the treatment of these uh, risk factors. So thank you very much for listening.